Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, July 25th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Generative artificial intelligence programs like ChatGPT are capable of coming up with creative and natural-sounding responses due to the huge swaths of text they're trained on. But to prevent these systems from saying harmful, violent, or sexual things, low-paid workers in East Africa were hired to do the often traumatizing work needed to filter this material. Karen Howe went to Kenya to speak with some of these quality analysts, and she joins me now. Karen, the workers that you met, what were they hired to do? The workers were hired to build a safety filter that is an AI system purely meant to detect harmful, violent, sexual content. So they were given tens of thousands of text passages in batches, and they had to read through them one by one to label, is this violent piece of content extreme graphic violence? Is this sexual content rape or is it bestiality? And they did that day in and day out as their full-time job for five months in order to build an automated safety filter that would be able to screen all of this stuff out of an AI model. Who were they working for? They were working for OpenAI uh, via this outsourcing company called Sama. And Sama is a company that does sort of behind-the-scenes data work for a lot of different U.S. tech giants, including Meta as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about the work? I mean, specifically, what kinds of passages were they looking at, and how do we know that? The kinds of text that they were reviewing, it was coming from multiple different sources. And this is according to a research paper that OpenAI wrote, where it says that it pulled together text from open source data sets that are released by academia or scraped from the internet, like Reddit forums, like the deepest and darkest corners that you can imagine on the internet. And there were also texts that was generated by AI itself. The workers described to me that they were originally a few sentences in the beginning, but they started getting longer and longer to five or six paragraphs. So these were really detailed, very graphic descriptions of things, including child sexual abuse, where workers were describing really grotesque beat by beat things that they had to read and that they would visualize in their minds because it was so detailed. How did the workers say that impacted them? We spoke with two workers that directly labeled this stuff day in and day out. One was on the violence content team and the other one was on the sexual content team. Alex on the violent content team, he started feeling incredibly socially withdrawn and socially anxious after reading this stuff. Oh, my mental state was was very bad. I had nightmares. I had, uh, I feared people. Maybe I, I see too many people coming, I see violence. If I see someone holding up fork or a uh, razor blade, I see people cutting himself or something like that. At night, I will dream, I will have nightmares. Even I, I'll tell my brother, okay, just come here, sit with me like for five hours before I go to sleep because I need someone to talk to before I go to sleep because if I go to sleep, I'll start screaming or something like that. So many things are going a lot in my mind, yeah. yeah. You also spoke with Mofat Okini on the sexual content team. I want to play a clip from your conversation with him. I'm very proud that I participated in that project, now that GTP is safe. But now, the question I always ask myself, was my input worth what I received in return? Karen, can you tell us a little bit more about his experience? Mofat, he very similarly started feeling high levels of anxiety and depression and started suffering from insomnia. And unfortunately, because he changed so drastically, his wife ended up leaving Mofat has tried to receive psychological counseling, but the estimated cost of psychological counseling is equivalent to his monthly salary. Have Sama or OpenAI commented on this at all, either on these individual cases or the general impact of this kind of work? Sama said that they provided a lot of different uh, mechanisms of support 
two workers that were going through these types of projects. They had counseling, both group sessions and individual. They had prayer and meditation rooms. They had free lunches, other types of things to try and make sure that the workers were comfortable. And they also did what they call resiliency screenings to make sure that the workers knew beforehand what was the kind of work that they were doing and that they could volunteer with consent. The challenge is these workers live in Nairobi, in Kenya, where it is an extremely low-income country and there's really high levels of unemployment. And the workers explained to me that this project arrived during the peak pandemic and there was just no work to be found. They didn't have any other option but to take it because they needed to pay for their bills And OpenAI said that they had spent six months vetting an appropriate vendor for this kind of work because they understood that it was going to be sensitive in nature and that it was going to be challenging. And they selected Sama in part because of Sama's track record as a good employer that is able to do this kind of work well. And OpenAI also said that this kind of work ultimately The purpose was not to have these workers doing this really damaging work for no reason. It's for a means to an end. The end being that these systems that OpenAI builds, like ChatGPT, cannot exist and cannot safely exist in the world without the contribution that these workers made. Is there a way to clean up the data without using humans? There is currently no good way to do it without humans. There have been attempts within the research community to try and minimize the exposure to humans by designing better tools that automate some of it away or designing a better interface that exposes the workers to the content in shorter periods of time. But right now, automating the stuff away is just not as good as human judgment. All right, that was our reporter, Karen Howe. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.